What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash and today is October 8th of 2020. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are. And in today's video, I want to go about answering a critical question that is on the minds of many people within the cryptocurrency space. And really, it's a two-part question. Many people are first asking, Nick, are altcoins in general dead? Have we seen the peak of the cycle? And along with that as well, are the trends of DeFi, Enterprise Blockchain, or Oracles, are they completely done for? And the other secondary question that I get asked a lot is that if it isn't dead, where are we in the broader cycle and what can we expect going forward? So we're going to dive straight into this today, guys, and I've got a great chart to start off this conversation with before we dive into individual prices and other metrics on the market. I want to go ahead and first just talk about something that I discuss from time to time, and that's market to scale. Now, for those of you who watch frequently on the channel, you'll know I hit a lot on this point, but it's very important towards answering that first question. You know, are altcoins dead? Is this the end of altcoins as we know it or the end of the cycle? First off, no. Okay, and I'm going to explain why that's not just a hot take. It's not just my opinion. Altcoins are not dead simply because they're having a severe correction right now. We have seen this time and time again, historically speaking, with cryptocurrency markets and with other traditional markets. But even more important here in this case to keep in mind is that not only during times of fear should we be getting excited because that's when smart money comes in, that's when smart investors buy and get eager about markets. The important thing to note here is just how small we are as a market. So this was a, a chart that came out back, you know, probably towards the peak of the market, uh, you know, around December and January 2017, when we were starting to set up pretty high valuations for crypto markets. And it still holds true today. It really emphasizes a point that I talk about, which is markets of scale, which is that cryptocurrencies right now, interestingly enough, are actually around this valuation range, around $350, $360 billion. And what's so important to keep in mind is that this valuation range is nothing. The peak in 2017, the price range we're at right now, or the valuation for markets, is nothing comparative to the dot-com bubble or any other major market peaks that we've seen decades ago in broader markets like equities or commodities. This is a very important point to take home that these small bumps in the road, these 60% corrections that get followed by four or 500% rallies in price are minuscule in the grand scheme of things to other asset markets. So if you're in this market for the next five years, 10 years, 20 years, I really don't know your time frame. You know that time frame yourself, guys. Don't treat this market like you want to trade it. Unless you're going to go about trading it in that case, which most people are going to lose at or are going to probably perform worse off than if they would have just held it. Most people are not good at timing markets. That's the unfortunate reality. I'm not saying you're a part of that whatsoever. Who knows? You might spend a lot of time doing research and all those things that you need to become a good trader. Maybe you're well experienced, you're well seasoned in the sense of being a trader in that case, but most people are going to lose at that game. So you're going to have to determine if you want to take the risk to be a part of that group uh, that possibly might be able to outperform the market from just holding. And then also consider the stress involved. And that's a very key point. I'm going to summarize the first portion of this question, then we'll dive into the one I think a lot of people are curious about, which is where I think we stand in the altcoin cycle. Um, you know, I think that a lot of people uh, really don't consider the stress element here that comes with trading above all. Um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, back and forth and stuff. And the thing that I always emphasize to people as a mistake that I see so often is people call themselves investors in crypto markets when the market's going up. Yeah, everyone's a smart investor. Everyone's a smart trader. But they can't handle the 30, 40, 50, 60 percent shakedowns and valuations for altcoins or their crypto positions, generally speaking. And I would say that a lot of people turn to a mindset of trading when this happens. Guys, if you weren't trading on the way up, don't become a trader on the way down. That's an excuse to possibly FUD or, you know, you know basically uh, get caught in fear, uncertainty, and doubt, or your own emotions to sell out of your positions when smart money is likely going to be coming in, okay? Take profits if you want as you're going along the way up. That's a much better strategy in that case. As much as I personally uh, do that very rarely when we're on the cusp of the new cycle, the broader cycle. So I'll go ahead and talk about that. Okay, so taking a look at cryptocurrency markets, I know I give everyone a, a kind of a, a brief explanation there in regards to my first answer to uh, the, the answer to the first portion of the question. The second question here that's important to note is that, okay, if altcoins aren't dead, Nick, if you're so confident on altcoins in this case, where are we in the broader cycle? Well, it's very important to understand how broad these cycles can range. And along with that as well, 
to understand that there are multiple mini cycles within the broader macro cycle for altcoins, right? From the, the bottom or the, the, uh, the trough in this case for altcoin markets to the peak or uh, the top part of the market here, we need to understand that there are many steps to get there. So there's actually a really old article here that I found from Altcoin Buzz. I was trying to go through and just try to find some like ways to kind of help visualize or talk about this through data. And interestingly enough, this is an article all the way back from April of 2018. And what's so crazy is that it reigns very true today. There's a few changes in this model, but you know, Shosh and the team always put out a lot of good stuff here on Altcoin Buzz. And there's a really good set of charts here that I want to discuss, and also a set of phases that they discuss. So you can see here on the chart here that we really had back in 2016 and 2017, going into the peak in 2018, three major cycles that happened, or mini cycles in a sense, that happened in the overall altcoin cycle where they use a measurement here that I think is very fascinating. A lot of people really don't tackle this. Uh, you know, we, we even don't even talk about it too much on the channel, but I do love these types of metrics when analyzing equity markets. And that is the percentage of top five to 100 altcoins increasing over 200% or maybe some percentage amount over the past 90 days. Uh, a lot of the time in traditional markets, you use this kind of uh, this kind of graph and a measurement of like um, how many of the top 100 stocks or the stocks within a certain index, uh, percentage-wise, are breaking to new all-time highs versus all-time lows. That's another kind of way that people do this. But anyways, we can see here very clearly that we had 10% of the market breaking over 200%. We had around 30 to 35% here in the second mini cycle, and up here around 70% when there was absolute mania, where you, you had a hard time even losing in the market, right? So this is the kind of stuff we want to look for, these kind of metrics here. And just to kind of blow up the chart here, this is making maybe making it a little more clear for you guys. I always like to make sure you guys can see the visuals well. And along with that as well, it's important to analyze the time range for these, right? So we can see here that a lot of these cycles uh, tend, it's not always true, but they tend to not only get a bit shorter here in this case, they get more fast paced and start to accelerate. But we also see a very interesting mimic of the upward swing here, you know, the days where altcoins have increased over 200% over the last 90 days and also a decline there. So we can start to understand that altcoin corrections tend to take about the same time, right? In this case, or at least cool, have a cool down period in this case before they start the next cycle. It's very similar to the upswing in the market. So we can start to get an idea of time frames here as well. But above all, there's a really important lesson to take away here. There's four phases we need to keep in mind. And I will talk about how these have modified over time. Phase one, since Bitcoin is the mother of all cryptocurrencies, the granddaddy cryptocurrency, whatever you want to call it, the largest cryptocurrency on the market by market capitalization, it is usually the first to rise. And this proved true not only back in March when we had Bitcoin bottom out of the market, starting to break up, up towards around 12,000 from its $3,100 lows, or excuse me, I think it was around 3,700, 3,800. Um, in that case, making kind of the first major move coming out of rock bottom and starting to rally back up towards relative highs for the past few years back in 2018 and 2018. Second off here, we have a secondary phase. After investing in Bitcoin, and investors tend to want to take speculative risk. This is what's basically uh, kind of, uh, there's, there's not really, uh, there's a terminology for it. I'm not really good at saying this, guys, but it's basically this idea. They even talk about it on the big short if you really want to kind of like see how broadly known this is. It's basically a, a theory where someone makes a shot, like a basketball shot, and they think, wow, like I made a shot there. I'm probably going to make it again. And then you make two or three shots and it keeps going. And you start to really get confident in yourself, right? Like, oh, I made 300% in Bitcoin. Shucks, I can do it again by investing in another cryptocurrency, right? And this is where you start to get the speculative nature of cryptocurrency markets. And the more this happens, you have a diversion of fundamentals. You have rampant speculation in the market. But this is what allocates, uh, allocates uh, liquidity to cryptocurrencies outside of Bitcoin. It starts the initial waves of the altcoin cycle. And since many of these uh, altcoins are in low liquid markets, they're small caps or mid caps, they have a range to be able to do multiples far beyond what Bitcoin can do. We saw this in the last cycle when Bitcoin did a 20x from its all-time highs and many altcoins did you know, 100xs in that case on their valuation at the same time. But along with that, we also can see it this time around. We've already started to see it as Bitcoin has gone from that $3,000 range up towards 12,000 when it relatively peaked in August. And now, the fourth final phase here that we have to watch out for 
is Bitcoins and altcoins crashing together. This is what you expect all the way. Phase four is what happens at your later date target where Bitcoin peaks out, right? We saw that in December of 2017 when we looked at Bitcoin. Altcoin dominance peaked out slightly after Bitcoin's peak here in January of 2018. So that's a far ways away. And if we just take a look at these phases, guys, if anything, we are in phase one to phase two of this cycle. Bitcoin has not even gotten back to its all-time highs, right? So again, just keeping that in mind here, we are very, very early on if you want that kind of context. Now, let's go ahead, seeing as we kind of understand the phases that we're in, let's go ahead and analyze the micro cycle that we're in. We are in the first, coming to a close of the first micro cycle for the altcoin cycle here. And that was again, coming back here, September 2019, all the way here to September of 2020, a full year this micro cycle went on, going from around 27% market dominance all the way up here to 42%, not bad. Again, we're not going to have these kind of vertical leaps. I've emphasized this ever since we called for the altcoin cycle back here in September. I've constantly reminded people that this is not going to be as vertical as before. And the reason why is because you have much less percentage gain from when we first started the cycle back here in February of 2017, or you could even argue back here in you know, June of 2016. But along with that as well, not only are we starting at a higher base, but this is going to be a longer cycle. As we've talked about with Bitcoin before, with the expanding cycle theory, where we've seen in the last three cycles, an increase of 11 to 13 months. The same goes here for the spread of the micro cycles for altcoins. I hope I'm not being too confusing on that, guys. If you want any clarification, please leave a comment down below. I'm happy to try to answer as best as I can. But in this case, we're, we're looking for a longer, broader time frame from the bottom in altcoins right here in August of 2019, in September of 2019, all the way over towards our peak range. And again, everyone has different kind of guesses for where this peak in the market is going to be. My theory is that it's going to be at the end of 2022, going into the beginning phases of 2023, if anything. That's where we can expect altcoins, in my opinion, to peak. So between quarter four of 2022 and quarter one of 2023. So if we're keeping that in mind here, just kind of expanding the chart here, we've got a ways to go to reach this kind of general mid-range of where we're expecting a target top here, somewhere up here, probably slightly higher from where we had the all-time high peak of altcoin dominance here. So let's just go ahead and understand first and foremost that this is going to take a while and it's probably going to have a nice zigzag pattern here where things maybe get a little bit more exciting towards the end. But all in all, we've made some great progress here. And now we've started to go towards a consolidation period. So this here doesn't look too dramatic here. But if you've been in some of the smaller mid cap plays on the market, it's been pretty brutal, to be fair. I've been in some of them as well, guys. I think I've been hit probably just as bad as anyone else in this market, right? Because my strategy is not really to trade too much within these small dips in the market, broadly speaking. It's mainly to hold the plays that I think are going to make major multiples and continue climbing higher. So we first need to analyze above all as we go continuing on to try to understand where we are in this cycle and whether or not we should be bullish or bearish at this point, what the larger cap plays are doing. Similar to how people go to Bitcoin first, they're going to cycle in to the large cap altcoins first. And mainly in this case, we're talking about Ethereum. Ethereum has an ultra a high benefit in this case due to the fact that it is the major uh, paired currency with a lot of the ERC-20 tokens or altcoins in the market. And interestingly enough, Ethereum has two key levels that we've been watching. It's resistance back here that it got knocked down at in regards to the end of August. And now we're looking like we're coming down and trying to make support around a very important even range against Bitcoin, and that is 3 million Satoshis. It's not only played as an important range of price in the past, but it's a very big even for price. And now what we'd want to see here in this case is a bottom at that range. If we get that bottom, right, in that case, it's going to give us a good sign that we can start to chug back up. We can break past that resistance in the short term, make it support and climb higher. This would be kind of the confirmation for the greater swing of the altcoin cycle where Ethereum's really starting to tear up against Bitcoin. And along with that is one, and one that a lot of people have talked about is Chainlink. Chainlink, again, coming down for a cool down from uh, its really parabolic rally here where it went up to about $20 per coin. And again, when we take a look at the Bitcoin chart here, it looks like it's starting to still establish in higher lows here, higher relative lows. 
all in all, this could very well break. Uh, I don't want to doubt that in this case, guys. But the thing I want to focus on is we take a look at either the Bitcoin charts or the USD charts for Ethereum, for a lot of these altcoins, right? They've not only gone through substantial corrections, but as you go from the kind of chain links of the world, which are some of the large cap altcoins, to some of the new established plays like Uni or, for example, Balancer or even Compound and a lot of the other DeFi plays like Kava, right? What we're starting to see here in a lot of these plays is that they're starting to get into that sweet spot range that I look for as an investor and that many other people look for in these markets that do 200, 300, 400, 500% rallies. What we look for is a 60 to 70% correction. 80% if we can get it sometimes. And as we look across these plays here, they're starting to get in that Goldilocks or kind of golden range that everyone looks for, 60 to 70%. For example, we can take a look here from top to bottom here. I know my, my chart my chart is uh, green here, so I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll adjust the color just to fit the mood and, and what I'm detailing. But you can see our 65% from top to bottom on Kava. That's right in the middle between our 60 to 70% range. Let's go ahead and take a look back here at Compound. If you really want to go ahead and you know take it from the absolute top here, Compound has gone down nearly 67% top to bottom, right? Against Bitcoin. Take a look here at Balancer, top to bottom here, 61, nearly 62%. Uni as well. Taking a look at the top here, right? Coming down. 65.8, or actually let's get a little more specific, 66.3% here from top to bottom. So we're starting to see a trend here, how there's a little bit of correlation between altcoins during periods of rallies to the upside, where it really doesn't matter too much which one's your position. Some do better than others, of course. But mainly the corrections, more than anything, have a ton of correlation in the sense that they fall in that ballpark range from top to bottom of around 60 to 70%. And interestingly enough, you're starting to see a common bottoming pattern here where the price has stopped selling off here over the past few days or so. Where Balancer has come down and made a bottom near a relatively similar range here, right? Kava as well, in a range here where we've had previous resistance in the past and it looks like it might be trying to turn it into support like it did back here. And the last thing I want to take a look at here is the broader oracles here. Almost at a full 60% correction. Right now, uh, we've totally in total made about a 57 to 58% correction. There could be a very good chance we come down to 6%, maybe not, right? When you get into these broad indexes, sometimes you'll get lower declines here than individual plays that might have outperformed the broader oracles and are now having a more steady correction. So, what's my general thesis here, guys? All right? Above all, I know I've rambled on today, guys. But in answering these two questions, I not only believe that altcoins aren't dead, but to understand where we are in these the overall broader cycle, we are at the tail end, phase four, right? In this case, uh, I would say of a micro cycle, right? So whereas this here is the broader altcoin cycle, these four phases here, in a micro cycle, we really have kind of a few phases here that we have to keep in mind, right? We have the initial phase, the accumulation phase. We have the parabolic rally, we have the correction in this case, and along with that as well, we step back in to accumulation where there's a bottom in the market. So there are really three phases here on these kind of micro cycles to watch for. And in the broader sense of the market, we are still in phase one and phase two for the macro cycle. Again, micro being the miniature cycles, macro being the broader picture. So anyways, above all guys, I hope this video has helped provide some context. If you want to know if I'm putting my money where my mouth is, I have not been selling any mass amount of my crypto positions. I'm still majorly in crypto. As I tell you all, I try to keep you all up to date, generally speaking, on where I'm at in the market, where I'm positioned. Haven't been really making any major moves. If anything, I've actually been accumulating a bit. As I talked about a couple weeks back, bought a pretty substantial position in Ethereum in the market. And again, I'm looking to add to different altcoin positions, etc. during this time period. I'm looking to figure out how I can get my cash into cryptocurrency markets, personally speaking. I'm not saying that's what you have to do. I'm just explaining that's what I'm currently doing. I always want to be as honest and transparent as possible with you guys. I'm not here to make you FOMO and FUD in the short term. I'm here to help you succeed in the long run. So I've been doing this for the last few years. So if you like this video, guys, please drop a like. Consider subscribing as always. And I want to make two quick announcements here real quick. I'm going to be speaking 
at Block Down Conference. It's a free virtual conference. You can get your free tickets. It's going to be hosted from October 22nd to the 23rd. You can come see me speak there if you're interested alongside many other great speakers. If you want to find more information, I'll have a link down below in the description for Block Down. And also, I wanted to make a quick shout out here. One of our teammates over at Digifox, Hope Szymanski, has been working with her father and many others on an organization that's helping to fight against human trafficking. I know this is a bit random and different from what we talk about a lot, but it's something I'm very personally passionate about and fighting. I don't think there's enough resources, enough effort, or enough attention on the issue. So if you guys would be willing to, you can check out the campaign. Uh, Terry Zemanski, Hope's father, has been doing this really interesting campaign where he'll do all types of things like marathons or he did like a drive, kind of a drive-a-thon in a sense back uh, a couple days ago where he had people on uh, talking about the issues uh, in regards to human trafficking. So if you guys are willing to help donate to the organization, I'll leave the GoFundMe link down below in the description. But all in all, everyone, thank you all so much for watching. It's a blessing to have you guys here. It's a really exciting time to be in cryptocurrency markets, and I hope more than anything, you'll think like smart money rather than thinking with your emotions. That is the key lesson here. I'll constantly drill that. Think of markets of scale. Think about where we are in the cycle, and don't get yourself caught two steps behind. Think ahead and think like the smart money. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to me ramble, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.